Hi, my name is Nikki. I'm the Obsessive Bookseller, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite young adult books. There was a hot minute of my life where YA was the ultimate jam. I loved them. It was so much fun reading YA. For a while there, there were a few duds, but I kept finding ones that I was really loving. And most of them weren't the ultimate popular ones out at the time. But as the years went by, I don't know if the quality of the writing started to diminish in the genre or if I just got too old for it. But I was noticing that finding those hidden gems was getting fewer and farther in between. I was having more DNFs, I was not enjoying the ones I was reading as much, and every like 10 novels I would find one that I absolutely loved. So I kind of stopped reading them for a while. I still have a few on my TBR and I will still probably get to them eventually, but they are no longer absolute high priority that they used to be. In any case, while I was reading I managed to find some gems that I thought would be Good recommends for adult fantasy readers who also like the occasional YA book. So I have vetted hundreds of them to bring you a top 15. Here we go. In no particular order, Walk on Earth a Stranger, the first book in the Goldseer trilogy by Ray Carson. Now, disclaimer, consider this one a duology. The third book was awful, but the first two stood really strongly on their own and the writing style is so beautiful. Her heroines are always very atypical and relatable in that sense. Um, I have another one of her series coming up in the lineup here. And the basic premise of the book is back when the, the California gold rush was taking place. This is a girl who had a magical ability to sense gold in the earth. For me the fantasy draw was higher than the Oregon Trail Wild West draw, but if you like the historical aspect of it, then this would be an awesome pick. But I just love the writing and the characters. Very well done. Very evoking. One of the few that's written well enough to actually draw emotions out of me, which doesn't even happen a lot with my high fantasy novels. Next, Wither, book one in the Chemical Garden trilogy by Lauren DeStefano. I really like this writer. This is one of those subgenres that I'm calling girls in pretty dresses in a slightly dystopic age. And I love this subgenre. Something about it really works for me. But the writing in this was so kind of unique and a little bit eerie. Not in a horror sense because I don't like scary stuff, but she was amazing at creating this awesome atmosphere. And the story was just slightly ridiculous, but I was totally on board the whole way. And reading this caused me to go buy the rest of the stuff this author has on the market. I tried Perfect Ruin and didn't like it nearly as much. Everything was kind of happening on the periphery of the action, but in this case, perfection. Absolutely love this series. No surprise here, Hunger Games. Still the best dystopian out there. I have a lot of arguments with the third book, but for me the first two are absolutely golden. I feel like her writing is so sharp. When something happened to startle the character in the book, I jumped. Like, I could feel it. I felt like I was there. And pretty much everybody who wanted to read this series already has, so I won't spend too much time on it, but all-time classic favorite here. Nixia by Scott Renton. Red Rising fans, I have a YA recommend for you. This is so comparable on so many levels. And I enjoyed the snot out of it. It's one of those books that has great training aspects, interesting characters, and a lot of cool world exploration. So yeah, for me it was the perfect combination of all of those things and kind of gave an Ender's Game vibe from like when he was in the training facilities, whatever. So. Yes, I quite loved this one. I love all things Rochelle Mead, and I really enjoyed Vampire Academy. It's not as kitschy as it comes across, like the last three books in that series are golden, but the media and the movie, everything made it seem just a little more bubblegum than it actually was. Bloodlines is a spin-off following the character Sydney, and it's one of my favorite things this author has written. The relationship is believable, even though I don't like the love interest. 
but of all the characters in any genre that I've read, I see myself more in Sydney than almost any other. She's incredibly relatable to me. So if you've tried Vampire Academy and was just kind of like meh with it, give this one a go. Awesome. It's saying something that I didn't like the love interest, but I still love the series. The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I talk about this book all the time. I even did a review for it, even though it had been quite a while since I read it. You know, these kids don't have like special abilities in the sense of magic, but they have certain innate things that they've developed through rough childhoods that allow them to do things like see when someone's lying or kind of pick up on emotions that people are having. One of them is incredibly good with statistics and numbers. And all of these skills gained through a hard life make them perfect candidates to help the FBI solve crime, and specifically serial killers. And I'm not much on crime novels, but I thought the passages in the serial killers' minds, they were these little interludes, were brilliant. Now, this has a lot more credibility than a lot of other books that I could recommend because the author is a psychology graduate and professor at Yale. So right there, you know she's integrating a lot of that deep knowledge into what's going on with their characters, and I find it so fascinating. So if you like crime novels, or if you like books with kids with special abilities, this is a perfect marriage of both. I loved it. And I have a signed edition here. I helped, when I worked with Barnes & Noble, I helped run a Vegas Valley Book Festival several years ago, and everybody knew that I was waiting to meet this author, so when she showed up, they dragged me over, and I was like, oh my god, I love your work. Total fangirl moment. This is why I don't go out of my way to meet authors very much anymore, because I embarrass myself, but yeah, really loved this one. The Sweetest Dark by Shanna Abe. This one caught me off guard with how much I loved it. The writing was so beautiful and flowy. It's a boarding school novel. It's loosely about a dragon shifter, and I've come to find out after finishing this trilogy that it's actually a YA spinoff of her adult romance series, The Smoke Thief, Dracon, or something like that. And the very end of the trilogy, I did see some characters come in who I hadn't recognized, and that's why, because they're from that series. So I love authors who are able to create an atmosphere and completely absorb me in their world, and this was one of the ones that, like I said, caught me off guard with how much I loved it. Immediately ordered the next two. The third one was only available as an ebook and then later self-published, so I picked it up that way. Yeah, hidden gem, especially if you love boarding schools. This will work for you, hopefully. Another dystopian, The Testing by Joelle Charbonneau. I love competitions. I love school settings. I love dystopian things. This was an awesome marriage of all of those things. You know how when you go to school with a character and you get like really immersed in what they're learning and you get to get like the detailed like layout of the tests that they're taking and all of that? This was perfection. I loved every moment of it. The second book had an even greater element of competition, which, yeah, so cool. I read almost all of the dystopian books on the market at the time when Divergent and Hunger Games were really popular. I picked up everything. This one crept its way to the top pretty quickly. Loved it. This is one of my favorite ones in this video to recommend because I love it when adult fantasy writers take on a young adult trilogy because it seems like they're always much more robust and exciting because they're used to writing these broader scaled novels. So making it accessible for a young adult, they don't lose any of that epic world building or anything. The Hunter series by Mercedes Lackey. Three books are out. There's a drama on whether or not a fourth one will ever be published. I guess the publisher dropped it. But the first three books are awesome. It's a slightly dystopic era. Lots of action. I really like the main character. Some cool world building going on in this. Stuff that I want to know more about. I very rarely hear anybody who has read this, although I'm sure plenty of people have, but I'd like to get it out there a little more because it is such a cool series. So, yay. It occurred to me that I like it so much that I'm having a hard time conveying why I like it to you. Just read it. Graceling. 
I loved this book when I read it. And then I read it again a few years later, like 10 years later, and the rating got knocked down a little bit. It wasn't as good on the reread as it was when I read it back when I was actually a teen. But there is something incredibly beautiful about this story. I'm considering it a standalone, but there are companion novels that go along with it, and I have no idea what the newest Winterkeep novel is about. I have a really hard time reading books for series that come out that much further in the future, but I'll probably get around to that one eventually. In any case, this one I'm considering a standalone for the time being. I thought the idea for the story was really cool. Um, this came out before teens with special abilities was really a thing you saw a lot in young adult fantasy novels. And I thought the abilities in this book were really original and very cool. And it is one of the more potent love stories that I've ever read. Kind of tugged on all the right strings for me. I really love this one. Even though objectively, I know there are some problems with it. But subjectively, it still does all the right things when I read it. Hex Hall by Rachel Hawkins. I binged this series. It's got three books in the trilogy and then a fourth companion novel. Back when I did not allow myself to read books in a series back to back, I was jumping around so much, had so many other things going on, and I was looking through my reading history trying to get titles for this list and saw all of them read back to back because I was having so much fun with it. You know, people say like, oh, I don't like this trope. I don't like that trope. I'm sure this has all the tropes, but the difference is they're all done well. And when they're done well, they don't. nobody really cares if it's a trope in the book, you know? At least I didn't. I just had a ton of fun with this. Still one of the most charming things I've ever read. School setting, which right there you've got to win, but it's actually a good school. The love interests were actually both appealing love interests. Yeah, loved everything about it. One of the series that I would actually like to reread sooner than later. Not a Drop to Drink by Mindy McGinnis. It's a duology. I especially love this first book here. Mindy McGinnis is such a snarky author. I love some of the stuff she puts in here. Her attitude comes across in the characters, and in a world where water is scarce and people are killing each other over the tiniest of sources, the homestead, this is where we live, we're defending it to our last breath, I've got a shotgun attitude, like, it's so good. It's one of the more thoughtful dystopians as well. I thought the concept was frighteningly plausible. In that lineup of a million dystopians that I read, this one also made its way to the top very quickly. And I have... A signed edition as well. This was one of the authors who was also at that book festival that I mentioned, and this one was great. Yes, I'm including the selection on my list. I loved this first book. All you haters can go away. There is something about an element of competition that always captures my interests in the books that I read. Now, admittedly, the world building in this one was incredibly thin. The relationships were totally unhealthy. But it was a competition, and it was awesome. I was all over it. The girls in pretty dresses in a slightly dystopic age totally works for me. And of all of the ones I've read since, because this has spawned quite a few copycats, this one is still the best one. I think what she did well was character creation and getting awesome tension between all of them. And the relationships may not have been healthy, but they were definitely potent. So, yep, this one's a favorite. I liked the rest of the series, but the problems I had with the lack of world building came into play a little bit more strongly as the series went on. But what this author does well, I think she does awesome. Which, bonus recommend, this is called The Siren, it's a standalone. I didn't see very good reviews for it, but I actually ended up loving it. There was something about the dreamy quality of the writing and, yeah, just the overall presentation I thought was quite lovely, so this one was good as well. I unintentionally saved my best for last, so we'll do my second to last first. In the same vein, this one's called Perfected by Kate Jarvik Birch. Girls in pretty dresses, slightly dystopic world, 
the essential premise here is these girls are lab created human perfection meant as companions to the wealthy. And there are a lot of ugly things that can come along with a concept like that. The author did a good job making it accessible to the young adult market, by, but also kind of acknowledging that it could get even uglier than what was happening in the story. Something about the writing style in combination with the concept, in combination with just how the plot progressed, this book was totally absorbing. One of my favorite things I've ever read, and it did catch me off guard how much I liked it. It was like slightly eerie. I, I love books that I find fascinating from a psychological standpoint, and there were so many little things going on in here that were just like not right, but they were not right in a way that was wildly interesting. So... Yeah, a very odd one, but one that I will probably go back and reread. The next two in the trilogy were okay, but nowhere near as like beautiful or perfect as this first book. Last and best, my all-time favorite young adult book, Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. Based on how good these are, I would have told you hands down that this author is an adult fantasy writer who's taking on young adult fantasy. Her stories are always so rich and robust. And my favorite thing about her is her unconventionality. So everything from how the plot progresses to the main character herself, she's just so unique and a breath of fresh air in the fantasy genre, young adult fantasy genre. And I loved every moment. This is one of the few authors who can evoke something out of me. And like I said, even some of my adult fantasy stuff doesn't do that. So, yes, this is a gem. It's my favorite one to recommend, and I shall defend it to the end of the earth. I love it so much. And that's my lineup. Like I said, I don't read a lot of young adult novels anymore because I got impatient working my way through all of the just okay ones to get to the amazing ones. And loving one out of every 20 are just not the odds that I'm shooting for these days. So I do have some good ones still in my collection that I will get to eventually. And hopefully I'll find a few more gems. But I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old and cranky these days. I'm just not loving them as much as I used to. I see YA getting a lot of flack. People are really hating on the genre. Like it's a badge of pride not to read YA novels. Like, oh, I'm too good for that genre. And I kind of started buying into that a little bit, but I've realized that the problem is, is there's, it's hard to find the really good ones. I'm not one of those people who really hates tropes. I feel like tropes are things that work well in stories and that's why they're repeated. The key is though, if I really love a trope in a book, it's because it's done well. And all of these books are perfect examples of tropes gone well. In some cases, the trope originators. Maybe. Thank you so much for joining me on this top list, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.